okay, I want to talk about this cool uh, case titled, It Might Be a Tumor. So this was a 54-year-old male presented to the emergency department, and he said, I might have a tumor on my shoulder. He endorses a worsening lump over his left shoulder for months. He states it's painful, but denies essentially any other, you know, pertinent complaints. Noteworthy history, he's homeless, he's a smoker, but really doesn't have any major medical history. On exam, you see this. It's a firm, tender, non-mobile mass, roughly above his left shoulder. There's no warmth, there's no erythema. His shoulder range of motion and strength are intact, and he has a positive Hawkins test and empty can test. X-ray and ultrasound are obtained. The X-ray shows both arthritis of the glenohumeral joint and AC joint. You see a high right and humeral head there, almost touching the acromion. And then above the AC joint, you see this soft tissue swelling, which is not well characterized. On the right side, you see an ultrasound of the, and this is actually a different patient, but a, a better view of the ultrasound. You see a hypoechoic, heterogeneous, um, well uh, circumscribed mass above the left AC joint without any um, significant irregularities in the contour of the wall. There's no surrounding soft tissue swelling or cobblestoning or anything like that. And the mass is actually, I said heterogeneous, but really fairly uniform in appearance. So this patient has a so-called geyser sign, first described in the 80s and is characterized by flow of synovial fluid from the glenohumeral joint into the AC joint. Typically seen with chronic rotator cuff tears and moderate to severe glenohumeral arthritis and presents as a slow growing you know, tumor in quotes, it's obviously not a tumor, above the acromioclavicular joint. Uh, it is seen in patients that have either chronic rotator cuff tears, tears or severe glenohumeral arthritis. And eventually what happens is one or either of those, the inferior aspect of the AC joint capsule is uh, disrupted. And then the pressure of the glenohumeral joint slowly flows superiorly into the AC joint. Uh, it can also come from the subacromial bursa. Differential diagnosis of this patient would include synovial cyst, which is a correct diagnosis, abscess, which you can exclude by both exam and ultrasound, pseudoaneurysm, and there's no blood flow on colored Doppler, malignancy, better probably characterized on MRI, but you can fairly confidently exclude that by history, physical exam, ultrasound at the bedside. Foreign body, there's no foreign body, but uh, history can help you exclude that. Epidermoid cyst has a very different appearance on ultrasound. And then lipoma also has a different appearance on ultrasound. So management, there aren't any clear guidelines here for the orthopedic surgeons, I would say. A lot of it's driven by, is this a cosmetic issue or a symptomatic issue? You're going to direct it at the underlying problem primarily, right? So if they have a massive rotator cuff tear or a shoulder arthropathy arthropathy, you know, you got to intervene on those first. You don't want to stick a needle in it, increase risk of infection, and almost certainly guarantee to recur. And you can address it, uh, you can address it surgically uh, and directly with a distal clavicular excision or a subacromial bursectomy, among other surgical options. So what happened with this patient? Well, he was discharged from the ED. Obviously, this was not an emergency. He followed up with his primary care doctor with the purpose of obtaining an MRI found out he had uh, some metallic foreign bodies and could get an MRI. So the CT is shown here. And essentially you see the soft tissue mass above the AC joint, which is arthritic. You see a high riding humeral head, which we saw on X-ray. You see significant fatty atrophy of the supraspinatus muscle with retraction of the supraspinatus tendon, which is partially visualized here. He had uh, appointments with orthopedic surgery. He never came in and uh, eventually was lost to follow up. So three key points about the geyser sign. Not all masses are tumors. It is unusual physical exam finding consistent with chronic rotator cuff tears. And treatment is typically directed at the underlying condition and there are no evidence-based guidelines to help drive care.